Hey guys, thanks for joining me today. Um, you may remember not too long ago on this channel I did a video talking about five worthwhile high-end makeup purchases, things that I think are worth any positive buzz that's going around about them. Um, just products that I've really enjoyed and I felt were worth their um, high-end price tag. And as I mentioned in that video, there are also some high-end items that I haven't been quite so pleased with. Please don't take offense if some of these products ended up working for you. Um, we all have different preferences. We all have different needs. But my goal here is just to hopefully describe these products and my experiences with them well enough to you to where you can make your own decisions um, as to whether you think they'll work for you or not. Um, the first thing I want to talk about, and this was something mentioned in a haul, uh, it seems like a couple months ago, but this is the um, Kula Makeup Setting Spray with green tea and aloe. It has SPF 30 in it, which was sort of the unique draw to this product that made me want to try it out. It says it's made with certified organic ingredients and I got this from Ulta. Now this is a spray that you have to shake first. That was a little off-putting to me at the onset because you know when there's a napping baby possibly nearby the last thing I want to do is shake a loud bottle around. But if that's not your circumstance that probably doesn't really matter to you at all. Another thing that happened right off the bat with this product are all the little cracks around the cap. Now this was not a cheapo product by any means but almost immediately that cap all the way around started cracking. Now with these makeup setting mists a lot of times people will do you know psh, 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 and several quick passes you know over their skin several pumps of the product. Now the issue with this one is that when I do a pump with it, see what happens here? The pump actually stays down. It doesn't pop right back up like it should. And so it sticks every time. Like that's not just an occasional thing. That's every time. So I have to pull it back up and go back with it. And it's just something it shouldn't do. Now on the SPF with this, this has never been like my sole SPF. I'm just not comfortable with this light mist being the only SPF product on my face. So if I know I'm going to be outside or maybe I'm going swimming, I will still have a really heavy duty, you know, lotion type SPF on my face and then maybe use this to kind of touch up a little bit. And I think it may have prolonged my ability to be out in the sun before reapplying more of like a lotion to my face. And it also does claim to be a makeup setting spray, but that's a function of this that I really didn't enjoy. Now, keep in mind, I am doing what they say. I'm shaking it up first, but I feel like this is a spray that I can really really feel on my skin and it really changes the texture of the products on my face. And you might say, well, aren't you applying makeup setting sprays or facial mists to give you, you know, an added dewiness to the complexion? And yes, I feel, I get you on that, but normally they are still weightless. This actually, I feel like has a heavy feel to on my skin when I apply it on top of makeup. I'm talking two or three pumps of this stuff max and I feel like it just gives the products on my skin, like I can almost feel my, my cheeks moving around a little bit more, like I can feel my makeup more after I put this on. So packaging wise, I have some concerns with this product and just the way it feels on the skin, I'm not a fan of it. Another product, and this is from a brand that I have had so much success with, but for whatever reason, this product is just not working out. And it's the Estee Lauder Double Wear Stay In Place Eyeshadow Base. I wanted to try this out because I've run out of several different eye primers in my rotation and I thought okay I want to try this from Estee Lauder because it's got the double wear name and I have had so much good luck with double wear um, you know just face products and so it looks like this it's like a skin tone you know beige colored primer there's no shimmer in it it goes on matte and it does have you know a little bit of coverage to it so when you apply this across your lids it can um, kind of cover up discoloration bluish toned veins but the problem I've had with this and I've had it with multiple multiple eyeshadows, whether they're cream, powder, some sort of mousse-like hybrid like ColourPop shadows, I have creasing with this. I am not one who really has a super oily eye issue, so it really surprised me and it really kind of made all fingers point to this as being the problem because I used it with matte shadows, like shadows that I just have no problem with with other primers, but this seemed to cause an issue. I've used more of this product. I've used less of this product, but whenever I use this, I consistently notice my powder shadow collecting in my crease. Perhaps if you've got excessively dry eyelids, maybe something like this might just be the balancing, you know, answer for you. But I really wouldn't advise anyone with oily lids to test this out. I mean, it really wasn't long. I'm talking like a midday I noticed the creasing. It wasn't
wasn't even like, you know, okay, it'll get me through the whole day, and then right when I'm about to take my makeup off, then I start to notice creasing. No, it was like midday, this just did not perform for me. So it just goes to show every brand has its duds, and uh, I guess for me, this is the dud from Estee Lauder. Let's talk about another eye product. This is from MAC, and it's called the Studio Sculpt Lash, and we've all got different eyelashes. You know, think of eyelashes as just an extension of your hair type. Some people have great curly thick lashes. Some people like me have lashes that are straight, like to point downward. And the story behind me getting this mascara, I've been trying, I feel like quite a few MAC products here recently. Many of them I've been really happy with. But I saw this particular mascara on the website and I had like a flashback to a mascara that I loved back when I was in college. So this would be the early 2000s, early to mid 2000s. And it was called Maybelline Lash Stylist. Does anyone remember this? It was just a straight up tiny comb for a mascara wand. And I wouldn't have thought I would have ever really liked a mascara like that, but it built such nice separation and length. It was like amazing length. It built off of itself so well. And I loved that. I repurchased that time and time again. And lo and behold, you know, as things do, it gets discontinued. So when I saw this studio sculpt on Mac's website, I thought that kind of reminds me of that one from Maybelline because it's got like this flat, wand here and then you see the comb only instead of having just one row of bristles it does have two i don't know if you can see there there are two and they kind of come out like a v and so i was definitely willing to give this a shot in hopes of kind of recreating um, my experience with that maybelline mascara that i loved so much years ago sadly there are a few issues with this for me and it's also funny i was looking on the makeup alley website which is just chock full of reviews that people do on all kinds of products written reviews and ratings and stuff like that and several other people said they loved that um, Maybelline Lash Stylist as well and were looking to this mascara but I really don't think this is a great mascara for my kind of lashes because first off it doesn't hold a curl very well and it was some mascaras you know they'll appear to be okay right after you apply them and maybe even you know as you continue to finish up your makeup or whatever it's like okay they're still looking good but maybe in a couple hours time your lashes fall. I feel like my lashes fall very quickly, like within the first uh, 20 minutes of wear with this thing, I can notice them straightening out again. So that's pretty disappointing. I really need to wear mascaras that keep the lashes up because when my lashes straighten out, I've learned over time, my lashes aren't that bad. They're not that short. But when they straighten out, it's as if I'm not even wearing anything on them. You know, it's like they don't even get credit for being there because they don't show up. And I even hesitate to wear this as a first coat before I wear false lashes because the false lash is so nicely curved up and then with this you know my natural lashes fall downward and I look like I've got this weird like two layered lash thing. I do think this lengthened nicely so if you've got maybe relatively thick lashes and you just want to extend them out you might be happy with the length that this gives but when I go back to apply extra coats I feel like my lashes stick together too much. Really not what I was expecting with this kind of a mascara. I thought for sure if nothing else a mascara with two little combs on it is is probably going to give me good definition, but it wasn't good enough. I need a mascara that really helps all of my lashes stand out, not clumping them together in little bunches. And I really just didn't expect that a comb style mascara wand would require me to bring in yet another separate comb like this Real Techniques one to go through them and separate them out again. My fourth product here is the Tarte Energy Noir Lip Surgeon's Skin Intuitive Lip Tint. Now if that name sounds a little bit familiar, they do have an Energy Skin Intuitive Lip Tint that does not have the Noir as part of the name. And as you can see, I already have one of these. It reminds me very much of the um, It Cosmetics Vitality Lip Flush. ELF also has a similar product. You know, it looks like just light pink in the tube. And then you apply it, and especially when you apply it to your lips, it really takes on a uh, real pinkish hue. It can look slightly different on different people depending on just the natural coloring that you might have in your lips. But here you can see the original, it's gonna be very much a pinkish type color. And I do think it looks kind of fresh and pretty on the lips. And so when I 
saw they came out with this noir and it looks so deep and dark, I thought, I wonder what that's going to do for my lips. And I thought of it as looking like a really rich, deep, vampy color, but maybe being super lightweight and comfortable. And it does have a great feel on the lips. I like the texture of Tarte Lip Surgeons. It has that same kind of minty smell. So the only question was, what's it going to do color wise? I think whether or not you really turn out to like this product may depend on how much natural pigment you have in your lips. My lips naturally have kind of a soft mauve look to them. They're just kind of cool in tone and just not super pigmented looking naturally. So this, when I put it on top, it's got see how it's kind of a purpley vibe and when I put it on my own lips it almost looks like I've put a grayish veil over my lips. I guess what I've learned from this is that putting a sheer purpley veil of color over my lips just kind of makes them look ashy and unhealthy and even though this feels great I mean it, it's a product I may you know use as a layering type thing maybe if the people out there who have a naturally like a lot of pigment in their lips maybe they could handle you know popping that on top and it would really be interesting over someone who has naturally very rosy lips um, but on mine it's just not doing so much now the final product that I want to mention is something that when I first tried it, I thought, gosh, I don't know if I'll ever be able to make this work. I just don't get this product. I was just a little bit dumbfounded by it because I felt like repeatedly I would try different brushes with the product and it just wasn't working. It wasn't transferring, translating onto my skin. I now feel like I've found a brush that does work a little bit better with this product, but I'm still not over the moon about the product. So I just thought I would share it in this video. And it's the Makeup Forever Pro Bronze Fusion. Um, I have a lot of different shades in this because it was sent to me by Makeup Forever. Um, this shade is 30M and this is marketed as a ultra natural and waterproof undetectable compact bronzer and it really is a different kind of texture happening here. When you touch it with your finger it really doesn't feel like a traditional powder like it doesn't kick up any powdery product and I think that's kind of a cool function but I really struggled to pick any of this up with a brush and so I'm kind of like what's the point you know they do say undetectable detectable combat bronzer. I didn't take that to mean like it was going to be invisible on my skin. I just thought maybe the finish of it would be so natural you wouldn't be able to tell it was makeup. And then they sent a brush that was supposed to work hand in hand with this bronzer, but I could not make like anything come off. I couldn't make it pull the product from here and still have it show up on my skin. And to be honest with you, even if this brush was doing a really good job of picking up a lot of product and making it show up on my skin, a dense mini kabuki brush really isn't my idea of what I want to use to apply bronzer with anyway. You know, I want something a little bit fuller, fluffier, that's going to give me more diffused color. I mean, even if it was showing up with this brush, it might be a little too streaky application for my liking anyway. So you might say, okay, just use the e.l.f. complexion brush. No, this picks up like nothing. Thing. It will it will not pull from the product to the brush. So I try all different kinds of brushes and eventually what seems to work is a goat hair angled type brush. This is from MAC and it came from like a little travel holiday set, but I also have, you know, goat hair angled brushes from Sigma that are the same style of brush. You can tell by, you know, I've used it, you can see what's on the brush there. It picks up the product pretty well and it does make it show up on my skin. So yippee, I finally found a brush that seems to work with this product, but I still have to do quite a bit of building up as far as, you know, intensifying the color. And I'm just not really getting what the great advantage to this product is. There are many other bronzers, both high-end and drugstore, that can do, you know, great work with relatively low effort and pretty much any brush you want to use too. I've had a similar gripe with the deeper tone of the products in the Makeup Forever Pro sculpting duos that have come out. You know, it's that same kind of texture. However, the highlights in these are beautiful. They take like nothing to pull up and they apply beautifully on the skin. They look great. I love the highlights. Why can't the bronzer, the deeper side, apply more like the highlight? I don't know. So that wraps up my five, um, I guess, high-end makeup does if you want to call them that. Um, I could call them fails as well. I mean, they didn't really work for me. They may work for you guys, though. They may be things where you're like, oh, that's exactly what I wanted, or that was just the kind of mascara I was looking for. Fortunately, I love being your product guinea pig. I love getting to try things, sharing my opinions. I really don't regret trying them because I did still come away with useful information that I could share with you guys. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.